You know, we're actually going through a fascinating swing in education right now, and it's wanting to connect our students to their natural environment. We can use the campus itself, the physical campus, the beautiful natural elements as an instructional tool. This place and the environment, it's not just something that we occupy, but we have a relationship to it and a responsibility for it. So we think it's important. So we want to integrate that into the curriculum. Last year, Mr. Walker invited our faculty K through eight to come up with a theme of global sustainability and to try to come up with an inquiry-based program for our kids. And my role in all of that was to try to use our campus as a classroom to teach sustainability. I think for kids, David can change the way they experience and perceive their relationship to their natural environment. So his challenge is to turn that into curricular experiences for the students. Yeah, so the Kukui Nut Project really started last summer. We just looked around in our own backyard, you know, just like Okulea says, Malama Honua starts at home, so what do we have around here in our own backyard that we can use? And given the knowledge that I had learned through the summer in the third grade Kumu, uh, we brought it to K1 and the kids just absolutely loved it. It was like buried treasure for them. Prior to the start of the semester, uh, Dave Blanchett approached me and said, you know, I have some great ideas while you're doing the outdoor adventure time. Maybe we could collaborate on this Kukui project. And so what I did was research where the trees were in the neighborhood, the different uses of the tree, and I put together a PowerPoint presentation to show the kids before we got started. And then they had to use what they knew of the neighborhood to figure out where the trees were and what would be the best path to make sure that we hit all the trees. When we found the trees up by the um, cafeteria, we learned a little bit about gravity because although the trees are up on the top, we found a whole bunch of nuts under the bushes. And then we hiked a little bit up the hill by the tennis courts. We talked about how all the different parts of the tree are useful. When it's on the tree and the nut is green, the liquid that comes off can be used as medicine or as sunscreen. Uh, when the leaves fall from the tree, they can be reused for composting to feed the taro. And then when the nut itself is dried out, you can use the meat to eat, you can use the nut as fuel to make candles. I found a very special rock up here on Rocky Hill. It was very heavy, had a little indentation on it. And uh, I thought, well, this would be great to you know, start using for the kukui nut. So one of my classroom supplies now is this rock with a little tapper on top and we crack the nuts. One of the activities with the K-1 kids is they would listen to one of their classmates, tap, tap, tap and then when it would crack, it makes a very distinctive sound, and then they would all put their hands up, you know, when they heard it, when they heard it crack. And that's awesome because, you know, really science is a love of nature, really. How do you see, how do you observe the world? So the outdoor classroom provides sight, smells, you know, they can feel things, you know, they can hear things, and the children are totally engaged. David Blanchett's made himself you know, almost an expert of sort of, of native plants and uh, he's pointed out to me, for example, the ohia trees on campus um, and how they're really not only a part of the natural fabric of the campus but, but the historical and cultural fabric of the campus as well. The fifth grade students, every year they plant a tree on campus. It's called the Peace Day tree and this year they chose the ohia, so I worked into getting a tree for them to plant. We delivered it to their classroom. They picked it up, they took it inside the classroom and it lived with them. It was one of their friends. They picked up all the beetles and the bugs off of it and they, they sketched it. Um, they just, they loved the tree for a week and then they planted it on Peace Day into the chapel courtyard. What I love about that model is that these fifth grade students, as they move into sixth grade and they come to chapel, they'll look in the courtyard, that's their Peace Day tree. Seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth As you begin to mature as an individual, it would be great to have class gifts or a, a remembrance or something like that. That had to do with planting native trees. To really restore Punahou's native habitat would be outstanding as we think not only about culture in the indoor space, 
but how can we extend that to the outdoor areas as well? Kealohi Rapun in the seventh grade is, is an amazing example of that. We started to look at the environment that surrounds our classroom and Case Middle School. And when we looked um, at the plants that are planted in the planters, we started to notice a lot of ornamental plants. We started to notice a lot of plants that were unfamiliar to us. We looked at Kuei Heleni, the Hawaiian Studies Center for the middle school, and noticed that the taro that was planted outside of Kuei Heleni was actually Chinese taro. So as a class, we started to sort of analyze what does that mean and do plants have a place and a purpose in our educational environment. We started sort of talking with the kids about the significance of having Hawaiian taro and what an edible landscape looks like in general. And we decided as a class that we wanted to try and reintroduce Hawaiian varieties of taro to the planters just outside Kuehelani. The kids, they integrated science. They looked at the sun and the rain and what kind of exposure that place would have. Uh, math, they measured it off, figured out how many huli we would need to plant that entire space, how to amend the soil. And then we talked about kalo in its cultural capacity as a metaphor for ohana or for family, saying this is the symbol of ohana. Kuei Helani is a gathering place, and we want to bring that feeling back to this space that we are all a part of here in Case Middle School. There's so many different levels to the activity or the action that we completed. Educationally, you can categorize it as multidisciplinary, but what it comes down to is the kids are invested. They plant their huli. They have now a vested interest in taking care of that space. And a space that was once littered with rubbish every day and balls you know, were being thrown in there and not really sort of minded at all, then became a space for kids to sort of go through this process of growth along with the kalo. Koi Helani is sort of coming to life as this kalo comes to life again too. You know, what we really want to do is tap into the natural wonder and curiosity of these children. We all recognize that, that it's their natural environment that opens up the floodgates of their inquisitiveness. There's something about exposure to nature and being outside that calms us, focuses us, and centers us. You know, there, there are religions built around that concept. But in educational terms, being outside and learning outside, experiential learning um, is supported not only by all the, the flood of the research that's coming out now and this rising tide from the Children and Nature Network, from Richard Liu, from David Sobel and, and those researchers, but also people like Piaget and Dewey and Socrates. You know, you go back in time and they were all inspired by the natural world. The whole idea of edible landscaping makes a community more sustainable. You know, the health of, of the community relies heavily on the diet you have and the type of work you're doing. So sitting in the classroom for six to eight hours every day sort of dictates the kind of lifestyle we live. You know, And if we can get the kids sort of outside more, we as humans, we sustain ourselves in a manner that only contributes positively to our lifestyle, our health, and our education as well. There's lots of things that we can do to make our campus more sustainable, more instructive, and more of a place of learning. Every living thing that we put on our campus should have a purpose. Are there things that look good that can also instruct? Are there outdoor classrooms that we can build? Or, you know, so if we're studying a sustainable issue that happens somewhere else on the world, can we study that here on campus? I think it's useful and important to the students to feel these connections. When you have ownership in where you are, you find more value. We are so fortunate to be here from the lands that we're given and the waters of Kaupunaho. And so if we feel that connection to that, then we realize what a privilege it is and how important it is for us to continue to do our role. We need to help so that all these things will continue for everyone. This place, Kapunaho, uh, Manoa, they are storied places and the cultural roots run deep. The fact of the matter is we've all come here in some capacity and all of our different genealogies, all of our different mo'oku auhau have come together here in this space. And no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, 
now we have a vested interest to, to give to this place as much as or more than we take.